What's going on guys? Mr. Atkins Autos here with another video for you. This one's going to be on changing the oil on your car. Um, I'm going to go through the steps kind of specifically um, so you know kind of how to do each and every piece of the puzzle. Before you get started changing your oil, first thing you're going to do is look in your factory service manual or your owner's manual and see how much oil your car needs and what kind of oil your car needs. Uh, when I go to all data and take a look, you'll see that this car requires four quarts um, to do an oil change, which includes the filter. So in this case, you'd want to make sure you have four small bottles of oil, four one quart bottles of oil, or uh, one of the big gallon jugs and you'll have some left over. The other thing we need to make sure of is we're buying the right type of oil. When you look it up, it says 5W30 is what's preferred. That'll take care of you in high temperatures. That will also take care of your car in extreme low temperatures. If you're in, an, in a climate where um, it's very, very hot, you might get away with 10W30, but for where we live here in the Chicagoland area, we're going to go with the 5W30. So next step is going to be making sure that our car has an adequate amount of oil before we change the oil. I'm going to take a paper towel here, and you would typically run the car just a few moments to kind of stir up the oil a little bit, let it sit for just a few minutes. We've already done those steps and go to your dipstick, take the dipstick out, wipe it off, make sure it's all the way down, and now when we check it, there's a lower dot where my thumb is, there's an upper dot right here, full mark, we are right in the middle, which is pretty typical for a car that's gone 3,000 miles or 5,000 miles on an oil change. Um, this step is a critical step because if a car comes in for an oil change and you don't check the oil first, if that car has been run out of oil and you start working on it, you're then responsible for that car. So if you check the dipstick and it comes out looking like this where there is no oil showing up on the dipstick, that is a good time to stop and talk to the customer and tell them they've run the car extremely low on oil and you are not responsible for any problems that might arise after the oil change. Typically, a customer is going to say, go ahead and do it anyway, but you want to make sure um, that's not a problem for you. We're going to put this back in. Now our car has oil on it. It's at an adequate level between the low and full mark. So we're going to go ahead and raise up our car and start the oil change. Scoot that back. All right, now that the car's up in the air, we've got the car sitting on safety locks. We've gone around and checked all four lift points to make sure that everything's um, contacting the car where it's supposed to. We're gonna go ahead and start draining the oil. Now, before you take the oil filter down, make sure you have another oil filter for it, and we'll check that it's the right one once we take the old filter down. Up here, a little tricky to see is our old oil filter, orange Fram oil filter. If the last person put it on right, you should be able to grab it by hands and turn it by hands. If that you cannot, you are going to take a long handled ratchet, flex head is generally a little easier to use, and a filter cup, and that's the only time you should use these. You should never use these to put the filter on. Put the filter cup up on the filter, snap the ratchet on, and then start loosening it. Now, I'm going to say two things here. If you are one of my students, Maine East students, Maine West student, Maine South student, we are going to catch the oil in this container here, and then we're going to be reusing it. If you're not one of my students or you're doing an oil change for real, you would simply use a regular oil change container such as this, or you still could use this, you'd just be recycling it rather than reusing it like we're going to. So you are going to start with the filter first. That way if you drop the filter, it lands in an empty bucket, not in a bucket full of oil. So now this is loose, I can turn it by hand. I'm going to take my ratchet off. 
going to have some paper towels ready to go and oil is going to start dripping here. Once it starts dripping, go ahead and just let it drip for a minute. Not too bad. Going to bring down the oil filter. And what you want to check and make sure is that you have the O-ring on there. Quite often the O-ring gets stuck up on the engine. If you don't notice that, when you go to put the new filter on, you have a new oil gasket on top of an old oil gasket, filter gasket, and it's called double gasketing it, and as soon as you start the car, they blow out and oil goes everywhere. At this point, you can take this, dump out the excess that's in there, and we are going to set it off to the side. You're going to take your new oil filter and verify that it is the same as your old oil, fi oil filter. Size should be similar, openings definitely need to be the same, and the thread pitch on the inside needs to be similar. O-rings are the same size in this case, so all in all, looks good. Obviously, if we check the model numbers, um, they are both PH3593As, so they're the same filter. You're going to take a little bit of new engine oil take a little bit of your new engine oil and smear it on the o-ring of your new oil filter and the next step is uh, depending on your situation if the filter goes straight up, you can go ahead and fill your new filter with a little bit of oil so that the system has to pump less into it gets oil sooner. If your filter goes on sideways, you can put a little bit in there or you just have to put it up dry. If your filter goes on the car upside down like this, there's really no way to put oil in it. You just have to put it on the car dry. The other more critical part is when you put the filter up there, you're going to tighten it till it contacts the engine and you're only going to tighten it three quarters of a turn. So if my line's right here, I'm only going to rotate that to that point, that far, three quarters of a turn. I know that doesn't feel really tight, but that's how much you go on there with. If you exceed that and you crank down on it really tight, it gets harder to take off um, when the time comes for your next oil change. They only get tighter. They never um, fall off. The only way they fall off is if you don't put them on tight enough to begin with. So three quarters of a turn, that's all you need. So that just contacted the engine, three quarters of a turn is right about there by my calibrated elbow and that should be good. It's not going to fall off, next time we do an oil change we'll be able to take it down no problem though. Alright, second part is we need to drain the oil out of the engine. Now because we started this ahead of time, we stirred up all the sediment that would settle into the bottom of the oil pan. Um, we're going to go ahead and take out our drain plug. Now keep in mind, laws of physics play in here. If you take this out, the oil goes that way. You want to make sure your catch pan um, is at the right angle so that it actually catches the oil and doesn't miss your catch pan. This is a 17 millimeter socket. And we are going to try not to splash the camera and cameraman here. So for a second I'm going to hold this up a little higher. Now 
Now, dirty oil doesn't mean bad oil. It means it's been doing its job. So you should always do your oil change increments based on mileage or time, rather than just if it appears dirty or not. You want to pay attention right now. You'll notice the stream is kind of coming back, coming back. Make sure you adjust your catch pan. And my students, you somebody's going to be holding this rather than just letting it sitting, sit on this uh, oil change container. I have this set on the lowest setting so that it won't fall. So when we took down our old oil drain plug here, oil pan drain plug, it's been taken on and off so many times that the crush washer is actually kind of smushed into place. I can't even get it back off of the drain plug. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the drain plug and put a new washer on here just to make sure we don't have any drips. And I'll work on trying to take this off later. Now, oil will keep dripping like this for a long time. Once it kind of comes to a slow, slow drip, then you can call it done and move on. But it will drip like this for almost hours on end. You want to replace this little crush, a uh, little gasket. In some cases, it's a crush washer. This one is not. So we're going to do a new drain plug with a new gasket to make sure we have no oil leaks, no drips, anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and call this good enough. Carefully. Thread that back in. We're going to scoot this out of the way now. And snug this down. Now, I encourage everybody and I require my students to look up the torque spec for the drain plug bolt. There's our new washer that we put on there. We put a new drain plug on this time. Normally you would reuse it. But 33 foot pounds is how much we are going to tighten this to. It is really important with the aluminum um, oil drain pans, or I'm sorry, oil pans. It is really important that you t t use a torque wrench on the bolts because if you go too much, you will strip them out. If you don't go tight enough, they will work themselves loose. So it's really worth the time to stop, get a torque wrench out, and do it to the right amounts. I've set this torque wrench, I don't know if you can see that, to 33 foot pounds, which is what our sheet said. If I needed to adjust it, I could adjust it up and down. There we go, it beeped, the handle buzzed, and we are just a touch over 35.7. So 33 foot-pounds is what it called for. Now it's not going to leak. It's not going to come loose. And we won't have any other problems. So just to verify, drain plug is tight. Oil filter is tight. And if you're one of my students, you're going to call me over to double check that before you lower the car down, or I'm going to make you raise the car up and do it again. Also, wipe away all of your drips. If you got oil on the exhaust, Wipe that up because oil smells really bad when it burns and you want to do neat work. Make sure all oil is wiped off. All right, now the car is back on the ground. Um, a couple of things so we want to keep in mind now that the car is on the ground. Don't move the lift legs out from underneath the car. If you move the lift legs out from underneath the car and the car has a leak, let's say the filter was double gasketed or you forgot to tighten the drain plug, before you can fix it, you've got to get the lift legs back underneath it. It takes a lot of time and you're laying in oil as it's going all over the floor. So leave the lift in place until you're ready to move the car um, out of the service bay. Now that the car is on the ground, make sure it's all the way on the ground. Don't have any portion of being supported by the lifter. That'll cause it to lean and it'll throw off the oil levels and it won't be accurate. So car is now down on the ground. We are going to take off the oil filler cap. And when we look at the cap, it actually says on the cap right there, 5W30 is the oil that we should be using for this car. So we in fact have the correct oil. Now it's generally a lot more cost effective to buy a gallon of oil or the five quart bottles. And I've drawn some lines on here to make it a little easier for you to see. Right there you can see this line is five quarts right here. 
So as we add it, it's going to be one quart into the engine, two quarts into the engine, three quarts into the engine, and the top of my masking tape line right here is going to be four quarts. If we go back to what I originally showed you, it says that four quarts is how much we need to do an oil filter change on this car. We're always going to use a funnel so we don't spill it all over the engine and pour slowly. You can always add more oil, but if you have to take it out, it means taking the drain plug back out, which is no fun. So we've added one, two quarts. We still have two more to add. All right, now that we're starting to approach our four quart mark, I'm going to stop and actually check the level and make sure I don't over overfill it. Remember, you can always add more, but it's a lot of work to take any out. You don't want to drip oil all over the engine or it really stinks, especially hot exhaust manifold right here. A paper towel will do the job. But since we're recording on use pig mat, so we're going to take our dipstick, take that out, wipe it off, and now you can see right at the top dot is where my oil level is. Which would mean my car is full. However, we haven't started it yet, which we need to do, which means my oil filter is empty. So I'm going to leave it right there because that's what I'm going to take our cap, make sure we put that back on before we start the car. All right, as we get ready to start the car, what I'm pointing to right now is the oil light. When you start the car, that oil light should go out really quickly, one, two seconds. If it does not go out, that's telling you you've got a pretty big oil leak and you want to shut the car off right away. We are only going to start the car 10 seconds, and a second person will be watching underneath the front of the car to make sure we don't have any oil leaks. So one person in your group is going to be watching for leaks. We're going to make sure that this oil light goes out um, real quickly after we start this. You should also have the exhaust fan on and an exhaust hose connected, which we already do. All right, so that was 10 seconds, and you see the oil light went out, which is a good sign. It means we have oil pressure. We actually added oil to our engine, and life is good. All right, now that we started the car, um, we've sent oil all around the lubrication system, all around the inside of the engine, and it also means we filled up our oil filter, which was not full when we put it on the car. So what probably happened is the oil level has now gone down a little bit. We're going to wipe off all the residual oil, make sure we put it all the way back down. And this time, you can see the oil level has gone down from the top dot. It's now halfway down in between the bottom dot and the top dot, which is typical. Now there's generally one quart of oil between the two dots, so we need to add about a half a quart of oil to bring it up to that full mark. And kind of right as predicted, I've added three and a half quarts of oil. I need to add about half a quart to bring us to that four mark that the computer said we needed, the owner's manual said we needed.
just a little bit more. Now you can see we are almost at our top dot right there. I didn't quite give it a long enough time to drain all the way down into the engine. Um, but we are real close to that top dot, which is what we want to see. And that means we are now full of oil. If after another minute or two it still wasn't all the way at the top dot, we could add just another splash of oil. But I'm confident that it's going to drain down and be right at our full mark without overfilling it. Make sure you put the oil cap back on. Move everything else out of the way. The final piece of the puzzle is going to be filling out an oil change sticker. When you do an oil change on a car, uh, two things you need to figure out, and those two things are how much oil and what kind of oil to put in the engine, along with, of course, buying the oil filter. To figure out the oil information, you could look in the owner's manual in the glove box. That would definitely tell you. Um, the car that we're working on does not have one, so we're going to use all data to find out the information. Uh, easiest way on the left-hand side here, where it says specifications, click on that. And the two categories we're going to be looking at here are capacity and fluid type. So I'll go to fluid type first. We're going to scroll down to engine oil and it gives me a couple pieces of information here. First of all, if you live in a climate where it is always above zero degree Fahrenheit or maybe it's summertime and it's not going to get below zero for a long time, you could go ahead and use 10W30 motor oil, um, 10 being it's a little bit thicker on the cold weather side. Another option would be for all temperatures to go ahead and use 5W30 and that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Um, in the area we live in here in Chicago uh, we've got hot summers, we've got cold winters and everything in between so um, best bet for what we, we're doing is 5W30 motor oil. Second thing we've got to figure out is how much oil to buy. I'm going to shortcut here back to specifications and this time go to capacity back to engine oil and on the screen we've got three options if you're doing work on a car um, like rebuilding an engine uh, this car would take 4.3 quarts to completely fill the engine with oil such as doing some major work if you're doing an oil change and not changing the filter which nobody really recommends um, it would take 3.7 quarts to fill the engine back up. If you're doing a typical oil change where you would replace the filter also, we are looking at 3.9 quarts and that's what we're going to go ahead and do in the service we're doing today. Um, so when I'm done I'm going to be putting in 3.9 quarts and when I go to the store and buy oil I'm going to have to buy 4 quarts. Yes, 4 quarts because they do not sell 0.9 quarts. So you're going to have to buy four bottles of oil or one of those big jugs. All right, let's get started. Now that we've completed the oil change on this car, we need to remind the customer when to come back again for their next oil change service. So we're going to make an oil change sticker to put up in their windshield for them. Um, two ways to do this. First of which is using the owner's manual that's in the glove box. Um, my car does not have one of those anymore, so we're going to do it the other way, which is using a service program like AllData, which is what I have up here on my screen. Um, once again, that's a 2002 Toyota Corolla. When you're in AllData, this is kind of the home screen once you put all the vehicle information in. And what we're going to do over here on the left side is go to maintenance. Once we're in maintenance, over on the right hand side here, uh, we've got two different service options. Um, normal service and normal service table. Um, if you live in an area that's a little more um, 
normal in climate, you don't have extremes, temperature extremes, uh, you might fall under that category if you drive a fair amount on the highway. Um, you might fall under that. But for where we're at in the Chicagoland area, um, we fall under the severe service table. We've got lots of stop and go traffic. We've got lots of um, potholes and temperature extremes and things like that. So um, if you look at the definitions, we actually fall under the normal, I'm sorry, the severe service category. When I click on that, it brings up this table. And these are all the mileage intervals, 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles, 15,000. So what you could do is go to however many miles are on this car and click on that. And the problem with our car is we've actually exceeded 150,000. So we're going to do it the easy way and just go back to the beginning here. If you look at the first, oil, the first interval, 5,000 miles, I'm going to scroll down this column until I get to engine oil. And when I go over to the first part where it says replace, first column, and scroll up, every 5,000 miles I should be replacing the engine oil and filter on this. If I click on that, it brings up this screen. And sure enough, down here it says replace engine oil, replace engine oil filter. So that is what we just did. So on my reminder sticker, I'm going to put every 5,000 miles or five months, they need to come back and have the oil changed again to keep the car running in the best condition possible. So here's what that looks like on paper. So a quick explanation of the math here. The car currently has 148,900 miles plus 5,000 more miles means when the car is at 153 and 900, 153,900 miles, they should come back to have the oil changed. Or the other alternative would be in five months, is March 16th and the thing you always got to watch for is the year changes now 2018 they need to come back and have the oil changed again so we take those numbers and we will put them on our sticker all right so I got my oil change sticker here and on the left side it says the date and the date they need to bring the vehicle back for future for future service is going to be three 16, 18, and the mileage for that future service is going to be 153, 153,900 miles, and the weight of oil that we used was 5W30. All right, now that we're in this car here, um, there's an old oil change sticker up here that is barely even legible. It's been up there so long. So we're going to take that guy down. And put our new sticker up there so it's nice and easy for our customers to see. And you can see March 16th, 2018. Um, at 153,900 miles, they should come back and have the oil serviced on this vehicle again. All right, thank you very much, guys. Talk to you later.